people. My name is Shamir, and today I want to express my love for the Fallout series. It's just so amazing and vast. And it just got followed up, or even though it came out like a month ago, but I don't care. And let's talk about the T-Series Power Armor. Now, spe the, specific T, the specific power armor we're going to be talking about in this video is the T-45 Power Armor. And we're not talking about the later editions, post-war, pre-war. We're just talking about the ordinary T-45 Power Armor. It is going, um, so let's talk about how durable or how powerful is the T-45 Power Armor. The T-45 Power Armor is composed of riveted steel plates which contain stainless steel. Now stainless steel, I know because stainless steel, even though it doesn't mention it, because in the Fallout 4 intro we see along an old, old power armor, yet it still doesn't look like it's rusted. It just looks like it doesn't have any rust, thus making it stainless steel because stainless steel does not rust. Now the reason it does not rust is because it, it has more chromium than its counterpart, carbon steel, which is normal steel. So, it does not rust. Another fact we also have to kind of think about is because the T-45 power armor, T-45 power armor, since it has stainless steel, stainless steel is very durable. It is used all the time in infrastructure and building. And the, the Walt Disney concert hall is made out of stainless steel. So it is a great durable material, but there are also, but, but if we look at the T-45 power armor, we also see that there are a lot of exposed spots with a lot of technological equipment. So if one of those technological equipment is damaged or something like that, the whole T-45 power armor sort of fails in its kind of functions. And since the T-45 runs on little, on batteries called fusion cells as we can see, you can see in the when you fight when you fight the raiders in Concord in Fallout 4, the T45 runs out of it in an alarming rate, super fast. That's why in later editions of the T45, they had to add microfusion batteries in order to keep it going on for longer. So now that we know those all those details, how how exactly durable is the T45 power armor? Well, we already know. There are a lot of exposed spots, and uh, but the it is pretty durable. We also know that it can repel radiation. What makes it what makes it like sort of capture the radiation inside of its body? That's because of is be due to the fact that there is a bunch of lead. Lead is basically absorbs materials. Now there's also other types of um, protectors such as RAM or radiological or like radiological protectors such as aluminum but those aren't very effective such as when you look up RAM which stands for stands for radiation absorbent material or can only support radiation which is non-ionizing or by non-ionizing I mean that it doesn't carry enough energy to ionize a particle now if you're wondering what ionizing is it's basically to give a positive or negative charge to a particle, such as a photon or electron. So now that you know what that is, we know that it can't be RAM because we already know there's going to be ionizing material. Aluminum can stop radiation, such as beta particles, but it can't stop all. For higher energy beta particles, which cause radiation, you need some higher, you need some higher density materials, such as wood, steel. But we, but. As far as we know, the most ideal kind of radiation protection is lead. So it's quite possible that lead is being used inside of the suit. And but we all, and due to that fact, if it is blended in with the suit, lead has lead has a, like sort of a reliability because it is known to increase durability. That's why it's often used in water pipes and because of lead paint. And 
because we know that lead is being used. Lead is actually absorbing radiation because of high density material. So that is why lead is actually a really good way of protecting against radiation. And it makes it makes a lot of sense too. Now that we know about the radiation control and everything inside the T forty five power armor, we can talk about the inner armor shell that needs to be worn with it. And that was one of the things that the T-51 ex later extended on because you didn't have to wear a power shell, armor shell inside of the T-45 power armor. When you wear it in the power armor, there is a sort of shell you need to go into first. So that sort of loosens a lot of flexibility a bit, and so it stops some things, stops some things from going on, such as, you know, being able to be flexible. And so because of this one fact, we need to start thinking about why the heck is there a power shell also included? The power shell is actually included to house the fusion cell and sort of like work its way around it, the power armor. So that is why the armor shell is there. And now that I think about it, the armor shell is itself is made out of aluminum, aluminum riveted plates, which I think are carbon steel, and um, so, and I think also it's going to be made out of some lead too to protect your other body parts. But we still haven't talked about how durable it is. In game, maybe f maybe hundred gunshots causes one, one piece of armor of the T forty five power armor sort of weakened down and become useless. Now, if we think about that, 100 shots is equ equivalent to maybe five tank shots. So, if I do, so if we think about, if we think about that at the same time, it was designed to handle Chinese tanks, but it wasn't designed to have continuous fire of the Chinese tanks all that at once. It wasn't ha designed to handle that. So, in reality, the T-45 power armor is only durable enough is only durable enough to take more maybe five or six shots from a tank or maybe 200 300 shots from guns or anything a musket or a pistol to eventually weaken it down so that's not usable so that's how durable it is and now let's talk about again like how powerful it is t45 power armor enhances your ability your ability to of strength and jumping, but and agility and jumping. That's why I said jumping. Anyways, um, so that's how it sort of improves your ability. But again, it's not that flexible due to the armor shell and the steel riveted plates because they're not very flexible. The plates themselves, steel is not very flexible as we know. So the flexibility goes down a bit. This is what the agility somehow goes up too because you are able to jump higher, the abilities go higher, but everything does everything goes higher, but it still is not very flexible. So if we now that we have all of this combined, let's see how powerful it actually is. A T forty five power armor can go against a death claw. A death claw is extremely powerful, we all know that. If you it can go against the death claw while facing medium damage to the armor itself. And once we know that, we know that, we know death claws are equivalent to maybe two or three tanks. Now, if we use, if you can beat up a death claw, now, if you can beat up a death claw using the, your power, it will take maybe a couple couple of hits, you know, maybe 15 or 20 hits from your fist. Yeah, fist. So, th so does that, so that means the power armor itself, without any gun, is incredibly strong. That means the power armor can take down a tank with five hits, if I did the math right. So that, so that means the power armor is extremely powerful and extremely Maybe a little bit, not extremely, but it's durable. It's durable enough. So now that we've answered all these questions, I'll leave the rest for another episode of this theory. 
thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this theory, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Bye. Shamir signing out.